Hi, I'm Andy Jones and welcome back to Get Modern. Today we're going to cover customising the company portal. So the company portal app has been developed by Microsoft uh, across multiple platforms including iOS, Android and Windows uh, and you can also log into the web interface as well. Uh, but there are a few differences depending on the specific, specific platform. Um, while there are some scenarios where the app is, is needed, um, like when managing Office 365 apps with uh, mobile application management policies on Android devices or allowing users to enroll their own device, um, generally speaking it isn't mandatory and installing the app is not a requirement for autopilot and device management to work with Microsoft Endpoint Manager. It is, however, a very useful tool and fundamentally its main use is, uh, is a front-end interface and bridge between the end user and the device management platform. It allows users to do things like enroll a device or remove a device, install available software, reset your PIN and password if this is enabled, and uh, one of the key features certainly for me is uh, allows you to force synchronization with Intune updates. So let's have a quick look at the various versions that are there. So as I mentioned, there are essentially three or uh, four versions um, of, of Company Portal app. You've got the Android version, uh, which is there on the left. Um, and then you've got the iOS version, which is here on the right. Um, so really the, the distinct differences are you've got the options across the top. So apps, devices and support. And there's uh, uh, a burger menu there that will bring down all your options and then you've got the options along the bottom within the iOS app but it will essentially give you the same information depending on the user that you log into and what we're talking about today is customization so we're going to be looking at ways in which you can customize uh, the look and feel of this uh, this app just quickly show you the Windows 10 version so I'm logged in with my user here and this is the actual um, uh, version that you'll see on a Windows 10 device. Um, there are obviously the various options here from the menu, but this will differ depending on some of the, the, the features that you switch on and the customization uh, that you change. Okay, the one last um, option really is if you go to portal.manage.microsoft.com in the web browser and log on with one of your enrolled users, uh, I'm going to pick Patty here. Uh, sign in. And say no. And you will see uh, the web version. Now, you'll notice automatically that the color scheme is different. I haven't got the logo, but I've got a title at the top. Patty is part of human resources. And what I've done is um, I've customized this portal to look differently, uh, different depending on the uh, department. So we'll have a little look at that and, and see how you can make those changes. So we're going to head over to the Microsoft Endpoint Manager Admin Center you can see here. We're going to select Tenant Administration and then we're going to go into Customization. Now uh, these aren't the default settings you get, I've actually added these in. but uh, by default, you'll get a plain uh, white background, uh, so it's vanilla kind of look and feel for your branding. It won't uh, allow end users to recognize it as their own company. And this is the main purpose, really, so that you can go in and customize this in a fashion that will give, uh, give your end user the confidence, something they'll recognize, um, and also um, so they can go in and make some changes themselves where they've got personalized options that they can they can carry out um, so by default everyone will receive this look and feel that you see in this uh, this policy this initials policy and but you also have the option to add additional policies up to 10 additional policies now the purpose for that is that you might want to uh, differentiate between different departments or different subdivisions of your company. Um, uh, maybe some of you've acquired, for example, and they've got a different logo and, and color scheme. So I've created two here. I'll quickly show. I hit the, the, the individual profile or policy, I should say. Go into poli uh, properties. 
and then hit the edit button for settings. So here I've got a blue theme uh, and I've got a logo. For example, I've added some uh, support details in particular to, to this department. If I go back and look at the, uh, the HR policy and again hit the properties uh, and settings, I've got a different color scheme. I haven't uploaded a uh, logo, uh, but I do have some different support uh, contact details and website information. Okay, so they're distinguishable by um, the title where they've got a logo and the color scheme. Okay, I'm going to quickly uh, go back though into this initial settings that you get, which uh, which everyone will receive. Uh, by the way, these these policies here, you uh, once you've you created your settings, you then assign to the individual group. So, for example, you would add the sales group, and only that group will receive that branding when they log onto the company portal app. Okay, but these are the uh, initial default. So, anyone that isn't part or been added to those specific sales and HR groups will receive this default. These default settings. So we're going to have a quick look at the uh, the default settings here. Um, so I've got a, a blue theme uh, theme color. I could go in and add a custom color if I wanted. I've got an organizational name up there. I've chosen the organization logo and name, whereas the uh, HR department just had uh, organizational name, for example. I've uploaded the logos here. What I haven't done though is uploaded a brand image, and that's a, a, a larger image that goes across on a kind of a header at the top of the the port or at the top of the application. Um, the reason for that is I find this you know uh, causes a few problems. It's not always easy to upload, and I do think this is an area or a setting that Microsoft have to consider and troubleshoot themselves and update because um, it's difficult to get working. Um, there is a guidance here, so try it for yourself, see if you can get it working, but I, I seem to hit problems when I go down that route. Um, just to, to say these logos, for example, the upload, there are, there's guidance, guidance here, there needs to be a certain size, uh, you know, uh, 750 kilobytes, you've got an image size of 4 by 400 pixels, and it can only be these, these specific uh, file types, so take note of that. We stepped. Um, we had a quick look at this on the individual profiles, but you can individually set, you know, customer uh, contact name, phone number, email address, etc. So you can add your customization in there, and you may have a specific website where you want to direct your uh, your end users to, or add additional information, be it contact information or just details around the service. There's also some additional uh, information here. Uh, under configuration enrollment. So when uh, users are initially enrolled in their devices, um, especially in iOS scenario, they are prompted to, to install the company portal app as part of that process. Um, and you may want to set here whether they are uh, the, it's available with prompts, uh, no prompts, or actually set it as unavailable. Um, You've then got a privacy URL as part of the uh, enrollment, and you can do a, uh, add customized messages here as well. Um, this this option here will give uh, the users a notification when you switch it on uh, for Android OS, iOS, and iPad OS. And this is uh, basically when there's a change of device ownership, they'll receive a notification and. If it's not on the web, the web version, um, they will get it under the notifications option within the actual uh, app itself. There's also other options for app sources that you can configure, but these, um, this section here, um, it's worth noting that you will only see these options within the default profile um, or default policy, I should say. Okay, it, when you step into um, your customization, um, your additional um, policies. So my sales and HR, for example, if I go into sales and then properties, those options when I go to edit the settings are not uh, are not available. So if you want to set those, 
um, you know, globally, if you like, for all your users, you'll need to go into the default policy to do that. Okay, so I'm going to quickly just show you that uh, this did work um, and what you see on the web version. Um, I'm going to sign in as Patty here, who is part of the HR department. Just note, take note of the address there, portal.manage.microsoft.com. And you can see the HR department's got this color scheme, this purple color scheme. Um, I don't have a logo, but it does say human resources. Okay. Um, I can log out of that. And then log in back in as Alex. Alex is part of... Uh, the sales department and automatically I'll get the different branding so I'll get the the, the logo this time the blue uh, blue uh, theme and also it will says it's the sales organization okay um, I'll quickly show you the actual app itself on Windows 10 um, I'm logged on here as Alex Wilbur so the blue theme is uh, uh, you'll see the blue theme here and you've got the various options so if I go into settings here for example you can see I've got the individual uh, policy link that I set up within that profile okay um, that's it in a nutshell really there are various uh, options that the end user can uh, personalize the apps themselves um, and uh, regardless of what you you know you set within the pro policies yourself um, for example, you can do a light or dark theme um, across the app. But generally speaking, this gives you a, a light way of customizing or branding this, this application, uh, which is heavily used really within the managed devices. Okay, so before we finish, I just want to go into your, uh, go into the Azure portal. So under your Azure tenant, if you log on there as an admin user, and then select uh, Active Directory, Azure Active Directory. There is an option here called Company Branding. Now, you would have seen previously um, the background I had um, where I had a Move to Modern black theme with a logo. Any resources that the end user is logging into, which uh, is backed by your uh, Azure Active Directory, you're able to brand as well. So when they're logging on to their Microsoft resources, you, you can customize that. So again, that's a strong strong message you're sending to people gain the confidence that they are logging in to uh, with their right credentials and to the right, um, your right uh, domain. Um, so they're not, uh, they don't, they, uh, they don't think that they're logging on elsewhere or e even if they can't, they can't log on uh, with their credentials, it's still giving them the, the confidence of your brand, if you like. Okay, so by default, you'll get the you'll get a default uh, branding, but you can open that up and, and customize it. Okay, so as you would have seen, I had this my move to uh, move to modern uh, background image, and I added a color background color and also a logo. But I also have the ability here to switch off or on. Uh, show the option to remain signed in. Now, when you initially sign in and put your user ID and password, it will ask you if you want to um, stay logged on with those credentials. And you can actually decide whether you want to provide that option to your end users. Okay. Uh, just wanted to add that in uh, because it's part of the customization of your whole end user experience and thought it was important. Okay, that's it for uh, customizing the company company portal. Um, you'll get different options, like I say, depending on the platform that you're customizing it for, and your end user uh, end user groups. You can add up to ten different uh, policies. Okay, thanks very much for now. Um, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you again soon.